Welcome to A Women's Brew, where women talk about beer. In today's episode, we'll be venturing into the world of the supercharged beers, where breweries have taken their existing brews and turned them up to 11. I'm Joanne, and this is Tori. Hello. And we're two beer-loving women on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer. Come join us. Here we are. Right. Going to be this fun. Is, this is going to be an interesting episode. I did, I did put in a, a, a disclaimer. So, so basically, what we're doing is we have decided, based on what we saw in 2020, where all these different breweries started releasing MP versions, we thought it would be fun to try some uh, imperial versions of originals, compare them, see if it was worth the payoff of amplifying them as such. Um, and I want to make it clear we are. <laughs> doing tasters of all of these first and we will be pacing ourselves and I've got a massive amount of water to drink yep. with as well um so <laughs> please yeah, teeny tasting glasses we <laughs> encourage you to try beers at home but we also encourage you to do so responsibly I yes, feel like is. say that based on what we're drinking today <laughs> do it responsibly yes. hydration yes. is key yes. hydrate pace yourself do not neck them and snacks and snacks i don't have snacks to, today no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're drinking enough of them i mean we're not snacks now. I mean, if we, no right now right now. <laughs> we, now we need we need snacks afterwards um <laughs> yeah so we are looking at beers that have they made a good beer to start with and then they decided to make an imperial version or a different version in some way um today we, I have got, I think we both have got, Hamilton City of Cake, which is the, an award-winning beer for them. Um, and then they then created Cake Metropolis, which is an imperial version. Those are both uh, chocolate fudge cake stouts. We then have, a, it, I'm a bit Hamilton heavy, and I've not actually drunk a lot of Hamilton before. <laughs> so it's all right. right. So then we've got Crunch. If you haven't had Crunch yet, people. I like, haven't had crunch yet, people. You've got to get on it. <laughs> although, I'm about to get on it. <laughs> although I, I say that. So this is a peanut butter milk snail. Um, I actually, controversial as I like to be, <laughs> I prefer crunchier, which is their imperial version because um, it's supposed to be a bit more chocolatey, which I, well, I've had it on draft before. I've not had it from a can, so we'll see, we'll see how Ooh. that goes. Uh, but also, spoiler alert, by the time you've watched this, yes. you probably will have already seen <laughs> our alcohol-free episode for dry January. Yay! Yay. Um, we've received, where well, we've purchased, uh, an alcohol-free version of Crunch. I'm excited. That's exciting. I think that's exciting. Yeah, so watch that if you haven't already or after you watch this, because obviously this is more exciting feat, I think, yeah. drinking this many and go back watch that and see how that one stacks up against these ones so you can see the whole what we think of the whole family of crunch whole family whole speaking of family. family speaking of families we have then got hazy jane from brew dog we've in a then got <laughs> og hazy and then we have a uh, triple hazy couldn't get hazy af but I think three is enough. <laughs> I think the thing is, we probably could have, but I was like, I'm not putting in a specific order. <laughs> yeah, just to get uh, uh, Hazy AF. Although, although Hazy AF is one of my favourite of their alcohol-free beers, just so you know. On a side note. Side note. So, side note, I prefer Hazy <laughs> AF. <laughs> Hazy AF. I do, to be A-F. fair... As much as we go on about brew dog and as much as people hate them, I really genuinely like the approach of taking AF. I mean, it's like the easiest, most straightforward. It's silly. Thing to do. Um, and the fact that they just put it on the end, it just makes it sound really great. Hazy AF. But that's a separate episode. So it is a separate episode. Yeah. So if you've episode. not watched that separate episode, <laughs> which was the first of 2021, yes. You can watch that now. For go more. watch that now. Yeah. Um, uh, speak to all speak to your smart speaker speak to go smart on speaker. all the big platforms <laughs> or come look us look us up on youtube go and have a look at it 
I stay away from YouTube because I don't like watching myself. <laughs> so don't like listening to myself either, but watching it makes it twice as bad. But for another person that's not me, you probably want to see what it is we're looking at. So <laughs> it's good for that. Right, what are we starting with? I think we should go hazy first. Oh, that's, okay. Because it's the light one. The, uh, yeah. Right. I need my bottle opener. I've seriously miscalculated this. I've only on. got cans today. Right. Anybody that's watched our videos before, <laughs> I'm normally, <laughs> I've changed my room around, so I've got this nice setup now. That's different to my previous setup. Um, but it's a bit further away from where my table is, so I've got to do a sad lean to do it. So, right. Which one did you open first? Um, and I'll ask, it will <clears> make sense why I've asked this question. In a I've minute. started on hazy. Okay. Go from low to high, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so I've got mine poured. It is obviously hazy, <laughs> hence the name. Um, it would be weird if it wasn't. But yeah, it's quite oh. juicy, quite juicy looking yellow. I think. Yeah. Nice fluffy head. A lot of tropical, tropical fruit. I'm getting quite yes. a big smack of of hop, vegetable hop on this one. I don't think some, I remember that. I've got some solid pineapple coming through. I'm getting a bit of um a bit of resin. But I'm I'm getting a bit of like a kind of like a milky smell to it as well. And I'm oh. not quite sure why. A bit weird. It's not got lactose in it, is it? No. I don't think so. It's no. just a little bit of a background. I don't know if it's maybe a few different smells mixing together, giving it sort of a weird milky yeah. vibe. But it's got oats and wheat in it, so maybe it's that. Might be. Might be. Um, but basically, the reason why I asked the question about which one you were starting on is because this one is not the first one to be released by Brewdog. So OG Hazy which we'll be drinking in a minute, was actually, just to give a brief history about them, that one was actually the one that was released first. And it's the higher ABV one, which obviously like I said, we'll get into in a minute. Um, what they did was they, and I know this is our supercharged amplified episode, but what they did is they kind of dialed it down a bit um, and they ended up remaking the Hazy Jane, rebranding it basically as a lower ABV, which is this Hazy Jane. Um, and then as we were just talking, prior to recording <laughs> um, there was a there was a call to have the higher ABV hazy Jane that come back so what they did is they made OG hazy and then from there they also made the triple hazy so obviously I'm not taking into consideration the alcohol free one just because that's a whole separate episode in itself um, but yeah I, I wasn't sure if you opened up the original no. <laughs> <laughs> because like are we gonna go first <clears throat> then second then third um, but yeah no, I thought we'd start with the start with Hazy Jane, which is five percent. That's quite a sessionable strength. Mm. It is nice. I do like Hazy Jane. To be fair, lots of pineapple. Yeah, sessionable. I'm a big pineapple pineapple fan. I do like pineapple juice. So, but it's got the right amount of hoppiness and and that bitterness in there. That yeah. it's, um, it's very sessionable. I think. Yeah. That's nice. Absolute classic. And the thing is, I, I think everyone probably at one point or another has had a Hazy Jane. Like, I feel like it's it, like to think somebody not having had it, it it's like one of those core brew dog ranges that I think most people have. So I don't know how much we necessarily need to elaborate on it. I, I don't think so. Um, I mean, if you haven't had Hazy Jane, go try it. Because um, it's, it's, I think it's now fairly classic. Um, new england ipa from our shores it's quite refreshing as well yes it's a summer beer i think yes i know it's a barbecue it's beer to be we are in it yeah. now <laughs> in january sad window where it's cold <laughs> and yeah i'm not, not a fan right let's put this to the side yeah i'm cracking OG. OG, hazy. og always makes me feel good cracking an og because it just sounds cool Mm. 
So this one, yeah, is 7.2. So that's or, the original Hazy Jane was a 7.2, which I think is really interesting that they've gone, we're going to take it down a few notches. And I don't know if it's because they wanted it to be more sessionable, to fit in more with the core range, or if there was another reason behind that. All right, so this is really interesting. I'm looking at the two together. Um, OG Hazy is lighter in colour. It's a lot more yellow. Ooh. And it's slightly cl- and it's clearer. I don't think it's mine is. is. Is yours not? Mine is. Mine's mine almost is not. clear. Like I can see my hand through it. I mine is not very hazy at all. Mine is very hazy. Oh, see, the colours are the um, same. The colours are um, the same. But yours is hazier than different, mine. Though. Yeah, the smell, the smell is smell different. Smell on this one, I'm not as much of a fan of because um, it's not as pineapple-y and like sweet juicy. You know what I mean in the scent. So my hazy Jane has got more hop resin to it, and this one I get more straight up pineapple juice, which is interesting. And I do actually question if this is um, it's got a bit of like a sulfuric kind of smell to it, and I don't think it's supposed to. So I'm a bit this and not be very good. You might have a bad can. Hmm. It's one of those things that's a bit difficult to tell because I don't know if you've ever had the situation where you kind of go, it smells a bit off and then you taste it and you go, well, I can't tell if it's the smell that's got into my head and that's given it a slightly, because obviously, you know, part of your tasting is through your smell and every time you go to take it, you get some smell in. So it's, I can get the pineapple quite heavily in the drink, but there's a bit of a weirdness to it, but it's not enough to go, that's obviously clearly oxidized. There's something clearly wrong with that. Is I don't know if it's my head playing games with me, going, "Oh, it's only because you smelled that it's a bit weird that yeah, it smells it's supposed to." That's now triggering it to taste a bit weird. So maybe I can't say it's. All. I don't. I'm not getting as much fruit from this as I was the other one. I'm getting probably more heavy pineapple. It's so. I, I think this is part of the maybe this is a whole separate discussion in general and as we like to veer off and, and all that. Um, I'm wondering if there's any element of when it gets brewed at such massive capacity as, as brew dogs do tend to, because you can get, you know, OG, you can get these quite easily accessible um, supermarkets and what have you. Um, I wonder if that, if it's that level of, because it's been brewed there at such a high level, there's so much inconsistency in it that it makes it difficult to compare my batch from your batch. I mean, probably two separate batches altogether. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see where mine was. It doesn't say when it was canned, but they're all right till September. My These are so my ones. Cloudy clarity. <laughs> my <laughs> ones. Okay, that's that's what the bottom of my can says. Cloudy um, clarity. Of, yeah, that's, that's my, of my OG. Of my OG hazy. Yeah. Um, that's mine as well. Yeah. Mine came out of the advent calendar, so I don't know how fresh they are. Well, mine's for, mine's you know the BBE of mine is December twenty twenty one, so it's mine's fairly. Mine are right. September. Hmm. I get I I can taste interested the alcohol. I can, in I the can taste the alcohol more in this for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not as much of um, I would say mine is not as hoppy. Yeah, agreed. It's hoppy in a different way it's more boozy than it is hoppy whereas yeah. the hazy jane is a lot hoppier and that's more sessionable and that's definitely a barbecue beer the og i wouldn't necessarily say it's a barbecue beer um although i feel like this has become my new session beer but it's definitely not a casual <laughs> go have a barbecue drink no it's not casual i wouldn't say that one was casual no right brew dogs are an interesting one because they've also decided to do the um double punk so they do this quite a bit where they'll go let's take in it's obviously what the whole episode's about though they go, let's take this original classic cool range and we're just gonna turn it up and we'll amplify it and there you go now you've got a sort of an impy version of double yeah. well i double quite liked it. the so i think the hazy range was the first ones that they did it with and they said that they wanted yeah. a family of beers so that people who like different things could access oh. hazy jane in different ways which i thought was quite interesting mm-hmm. um I, I still think I'm a hazy, hazy Jane, hazy AF fan more than the bigger ones. But that, that's just me personally. Like I 
I'm not a fan of the hot of the hot burn or the alcohol burn. Like I want it all nice and leveled out. So they're not they're not my faves. We know I'm not a dipper and a tipper <laughs> fan. So no. Whereas I think after I get past the first few sips, the OG hazy, where it's like fairly, you know, the booziness is yeah. fairly thick. Uh, it becomes it becomes a lot more sessionable than the first few sips yeah. did. I definitely still wouldn't describe it as like a barbecue beer for casual light drinking no. uh, but it's it's um quite enjoy it but i think with the with the double ipa i think we discussed it on a separate episode yeah i didn't like the first one i had i found it too overly piney um too bitter it, it was way too bitter is what it was and i think the second one when I had it was more alcoholic and it toned down the bitterness and I found that was quite interesting because I was expecting when we drank it this when I drank it the second time to go yeah two bitters too bitter and I went oh actually <laughs> it's not it's very boozy now yeah no double punk is not for me <laughs> it's not it's definitely not on your favorite no, list. not on my list oh this glass is filthy I don't even want to show it Oh, right. Now, I think this is really interesting because my triple is is completely clear. My triple? There's a very slight, like, there's some matter in it that's stopping it from being 100% clear. But, like, along, my, along here, so I've got triple, I've got Hazy Jane OG triple. They gradually go from very hazed to slightly hazed to almost not at all, not at all hazed. That is interesting. So, for me... Um... I would say this one is less haze than the other ones. There's definitely still a haze to it. Um, but it's that it's that element where it's just so haze that you can't see through to the other side, but you can see a shadow of your finger on the other side of the glass. Um, I think if it was any lighter, it, you'd be able to see through it. It's just that hazed enough that I can't see through to the other side. Look, if you're watching the video, I'm put, yeah, can you can you. literally <laughs> see my hand straight through it. I, like, I have not got hazed. Say, My hazy Janes are not hazy. <laughs> I can't really hold them all up in one go. I need the board. I need the fancy board. But I would say they're all very. They're all like a kind of all very on par. Yeah, for those that are listening. So what's on? What's the one that's closest to your microphone? Because that one's slightly darker that's in triple. color. So triple, triple slightly darker in color. I think the other that's two, just the lighting. Oh, is it? Well, yeah. The other two are about the same color, but they're all an even amount of haziness, whereas mine yeah. <laughs> decrease. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting that that yours yeah. were, mine stayed all the same. I would say there's maybe the bot. It's kind of a bit ombre. We're towards the bottom of my triple. It's slightly darker, but the key bits of the the main part of it is pretty much they're all almost identical i would say yeah mine are not that's interesting from a quality control perspective yeah and i'm actually so i've gone back in for a second sip of the og where i said it was a bit sulfuric and i think what it was was heavy booziness on mm. the first one that almost borderlined on yeah. like synthetic plastic sort of that that level once i drank a chunk of it smelling it now it smells just more booziness and i think the triple if i'm honest it's the same where I'm getting juice, but very lightly. It's mainly booziness. Yeah. And mine's very sweet. Oh, God. Mine's very boozy. <laughs> I mean, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike it. But it's... I wouldn't say I, I, I would be wanting to go back out. So I, I remember when the triple kind of was released. Um, it went to a supermarket, didn't it? That was the big thing. I think so supermarket and i can't remember if it was more since tesco, tesco. Uh, they, I'm, <laughs> sure I'm assuming it's tesco, it's tesco. i think they have like an tesco. exclusive everything goes to tesco's first <laughs> i mean that's where brew dog started was in tesco's supermarket wise so yeah i think i think that was released and then um the double ipa sort of they both came out so they were going oh look at us we've got you know big abv beers um and it's not something that i think i'd go into to tesco and do my weekly shopping go I'll, I'll throw some in the basket what, what i usually buy from tesco would be the light one to have the barbecue beer as you describe it i yeah. wouldn't be going in and going i'm going to get this and to be honest it's it's not much depth of flavor it's for me mine is just a lot of booziness and i think there's almost a bit of bitterness on the end of it as well yeah there's bitterness it's i'm finding also there's a sweetness and a floral note to it 
I'm getting floral, but I'm not getting sweet on mine. But it's oh the the the, the lasting taste on it is just booze. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not a fan of this gonna... amped up version. Give no. me a hazy Jane any day. Thank you very much. I do. I do think but, that was quite an interesting experiment. Didn't yeah, me? that was an interesting experiment to do. Um, but I, I'm not a dipper tipper, high alcohol pale beer fan. So that wouldn't. I'm not surprised that that's not for me. And I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying me. my. <laughs> My hazy with the ABVs though, it's it's not about and it's something I made a note of um to discuss later. For me, it's not just about the ABV. And I think for a lot of people, there's there's this idea of like higher ABV means it's this, I don't know, this more intense product which we should appreciate more. In some yeah. Way. And I don't think that's the case. I think if it's high ABV, there needs to be a nice balance of flavors. And I would say, oh, yeah. gee, me has a nice balance. Triple hazy doesn't have a nice balance. If it's just all alcohol and alcohol burn, I don't see that as being enjoyable for me. Uh, some people do. It's just for me, I like it a bit more, a bit more depth to it, really. I think when it's all just absolutely, boom, I could just have spirits. What's yeah. the What's the difference? Yeah. Well, I think some... 9.5. I do think some people are just like, yep, yeah, I've had a 15% beer. Mm. Cool. Um, did you enjoy it or did, were you just trying to get drunk? I don't drink beer to get drunk. I drink beer for the flavour. The drunkenness is an interesting side effect. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah, side effect. <laughs> I prefer, effect like, to... But I also prefer having like a third of something and really enjoying it rather than yeah. trying to, you know... That's like a pint. When it comes to like high ABV stouts, which we're about to sort of move on to, for me, it's, you know, how complex is that flavor? Is it is it a mix of flavors that I enjoy? Like the Omnipolo Elvis, I really didn't enjoy that. That mix of flavors was not for me. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, an 11% or a 3%. It The way the flavors came out for me, it just wasn't a nice enough mix that I'd want to go back for it again. And like I said, the OG hazy to me, that was a perfect balance because it had the hoppiness, it has the booziness, but it's still sessionable. The triple, I'd find it hard to session because it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's balanced enough for me to find it enjoyable to drink. It's just not exciting to me. Yeah. Um, but I do think before we move on from Brewdog, I mean, uh, they've done so many variants with their beers. I think they are quite, they're quite big and well known for doing variants of their beers. I've got behind me, I've got um, a Nitro Jet Black Heart, because um, that was obviously one that varied. They had uh, the normal Jet Black Heart. Um, they did the Nitro version. And while I wouldn't say that's particularly highlighted as being uh, amped up per se, it is because the original Jet Black Heart was a lower ABV. Um, so it started out, I think, at a five or four point something, and it's gone up to about six, around 6%. Um, so I don't know what's happened in the process, but from going from a normal to a nitro, they have just to show the can, just to make it interesting. Yeah, it's gone up to a 6%. Um, that's what the can looks like for anyone that wants to seek it out in uh is that Morrison's? I think that that one was in. yeah. Yeah. Um I've not tried it yet, uh, because I wanted to try to find a normal jet black heart, but basically this one replaced normal jet black heart. Um there was also a chocolate nitro, which they've there was originally a chocolate. I don't think that one's the same though, because that one had the exact same ABV of 8.2% when I looked it up. I know that one was more available in the US than it was here. Um, so I never got my hands on it when it did come here. Um, Cause I think it might've been a bar only one if I'm a I, bit uh, Oh, I bought it a while back. Like I think I bought it not long after I became an EFP from Brewdog Soho. I brought a bottle of it home. So they did bottle it. But it, whether I, you wouldn't, have, it wasn't in supermarkets, for example. Yeah, like, and I, I had to get I, it from Brewdog. I don't even remember it being for sale, like on a on a website format. But it very well might have no. been. It might be very limited on it. Um, but I know that I think it was a, the first brew of it was in the US, and then they brought it over here. When I looked it up, they were saying I think Ohio was where it was brewed first, and then they brought it here, and now they just do the nitro version, which is also available at Morrison's. So, I've if got, your Morrison's has it. <laughs> 
yeah mine yeah, doesn't nonsense. but again we discussed it in the supermarkets it's so hit and miss it's like you know go and brew dog's website you can get the nitro jet black heart you can't get the choco libro from what i've seen but definitely get jet black heart so um that's another one that they kind of did and then they did an overworks one where it was um it was a brew dog overworks uh funk versus punk where they did a brett fermented ipa i don't know much about brett fermentation i don't know if you do oh yeah <laughs> Do you want to share any facts? Oh, I love it. I love a bit of Brit. Right. So I know what it tastes like, but I have no idea about the. Product. I just know that my taste buds are happy when I have them. Yeah. So it's lovely. So um, <laughs> so Britannomyces is a wild yeast. Um, so it doesn't sour the beer, but it does add funkiness to it. So by inoculating a beer with Britannomyces, which is incidentally, um, it grows naturally on like the skins of fruit and things so so like back in the day but before they understood sterilization and things like that it's very easy for a beer to have these types of flavors in it because they were just around and your beers like lambics and things like that where they are just um fermented with whatever is in the air bretonomyces can be in there because it is a wild yeast um so it gives now if you're if you I uh, haven't had Brettanomyces before. Please brace yourself because the words used to describe Brettanomyces are horse blanket, barnyard and wet wood, <laughs> which all sound disgusting. But when they're in a beer, they're actually really delicious. <laughs> That's why uh, every time I've got a Saison and everyone goes, I don't like it because I don't like horse blankets. I'm like, I don't. I that was new to me. And I was like, I don't understand. What do you mean? Like, it tastes yeah. really it's, yeah it's just this like funkiness and those like are the it. kinds of words that people use to describe it and I try, I get barnyard when I do like I understand in my mind like I'm from Kent there's a lot of farms around here I've been through a lot of farms and I'm like oh yeah I know what you mean by barnyard and it's that kind of wet wood hay um just, yeah but yeah, horse blanket just, just confuses horse me blanket, like, horse blanket I don't blanket. get <laughs> horse blanket I, that's not my kind of description that i use barnyard i use quite frequently if i'm doing if i'm doing something that's bretted um and funky but it's but it, it does like, taste it tastes a lot nicer it tastes it. yeah it tastes nicer <laughs> than it sounds um give it a go but it's not for everybody it like wild fermentation definitely splits the room <laughs> yeah but i really enjoy a a funk versus punk um I use it in one of my classes when we're doing fermentation flavors and yeah, it's a, it's quite lovely. There's like a real, um, there's a real citrus zestiness that is behind that funkiness and it's really lovely. I've not tried it and it's been one of the ones that I've really wanted oh, to try. Um, do try it. Never, never got my hands on it, but then I kind of thought like, oh, is it going to be like the same when, as when Brewdog normally does sort of a slight twist to something where I, for me personally, I never get overly excited about mm. it. I always find I get excited and then I try it and I go, I'm not blown, like it's not bad, but I'm not blown away. So I'm, until I did the research for this and actually realized it was a breaded, a Brett fermented IPA, I was kind of like, oh, what twist of that? You know, have they done like a half beer, half cider? Tw- like who knows? And then I looked into it, I was like, oh, that actually sounds quite nice. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I think I'm more likely to try it now if I can get my hands on it. Yeah, get, you used to be able to get it in Tesco's, but I don't think you can now. No, you, you might can't. Because I think from Brewdog. I think I looked it up when we went to do yeah. our IPAs, and they they don't have it. So yeah. next time I happen to come across one, I would definitely try because it, it sounds really nice. Um, and then separately, Brewdog we always said have done their AF alcohol free ones, which again, shameless plug. Watch our <laughs> previous listen, episode on those. The and, AF uh, episode. Yeah, listen to AF and we will tell you about the AFs separately because this is all about the booze. Yeah, we're all about <laughs> the booze today. We've had enough dryness. <laughs> it's moving on to that sounds that sounds unintentionally gross. We're moving on to the high ABV stuff. Yeah. So with that, shall we crack the crunch? Crunch? Yes, we can do crunch. But now, do you think it's better to do? Do you think it's better to do crunch or is it better to do cake? I don't think it I don't think it matters. Either way around. I've already had, I've had crunch and crunch yet. I've not had the cakes. I am happy to go with so, whichever one you think is the best one. Let's, let's start with crunches first. Okay. Um, so I've only ever had crunch in can. 
but as I said before, I've had crunchier on draft, so this will be be interesting. This is more my wheelhouse. So these are so crunch is a is a milk stout, and crunchier is an imperial milk stout, but is being referred to as an imperial uh, pastry stout. While we're pouring this, yeah. Yes, my question to you, I've got my yeah. own idea. My question to you is, why do you think breweries choose to do this? Why do you think they choose to amp it up? I, I think my answer that I'd give you now would be a lot different than what I would give you this time last year. Um, do you know what? I have literally no idea why they do it. Um, whether it is to get into a different market of people because they're like, okay, well, this is my, a really good beer, but there are this, this chunk of the market who enjoy higher ABVs, um, you know, and particularly when it's, I think when it's a stout as well, people love an MP. So I think tapping into that market by amping up your beer might well be a good marketing way to go. It may also be that because they found a beer that they've, made really well um, and they know really well then the brewer wants to um, experiment and push themselves and see if they can make it as well in a higher ABV because it's that's going to really change your ingredients and how it's going to come out at the end so maybe it's trying to push themselves as well yeah, I think I think like this time last year, if you would have asked me before I got engaged in all the forums and everything else and actually had conversations with people that work in the brewing industry and, and all that, when it came across from a brew dog standpoint, it sort of came across as if, oh, they're milking a recipe that they know is going to do well. So, you know, if they can find a way to change it slightly and people will buy it, maybe, you know, that's what they're trying to do. And it came across that way. Um, but actually being sort of more in touch with people that are actually doing it. it it's my answer now I mean I'll hold my hands up completely and say that's what it seemed like but now knowing what I know I mean it does kind of seem like what you said they found something a baseline recipe that works really well and and maybe they just want to play with it a bit and see well can I make it better is there anything I can do to push the boundaries and do something a bit different and a bit interesting I think also the market has kind of changed in a way this year where people have gone I've seen this year anyways in particular everyone's gone I want higher ABV so I think they've gone I've taken this beer that's done quite well as it is and let's just up the ABV because that's what the people want um, I mean you might still get the element of people going let's take what we know and find a way to twist it because we know it will sell but I don't blame them for that because I think I, I think there's always a push to get something new out so if that is what's happening with any of them which I'm not sure it is I wouldn't blame them for it. I I don't think I don't I personally as per, as a person that brews um I don't think that you can really say oh they've got this recipe and they're going to tweak it because you don't if you tweak it it could go completely Massively wrong. Massively change it can too. Yeah. Yeah, and by and by making it a higher ABV you are spend you're putting more ingredients in and you're spending more money and that is an expensive mistake to make if it doesn't work mm. out the way you want it to so i think i don't necessarily think from a business st- standpoint it doesn't make sense to be like oh yeah we'll just um, amp it up and yeah oh if it doesn't work oh well because it's going to cost you a lot of money yeah, in that because yeah, it's a sure. huge amount more more um more ingredients which is going to be more expensive the final product may well need to be more expensive and if it's no good and people don't buy it that's all your money down the drain so from a business point of view i don't think that's a reason behind it i think well, it's when your barrel agent experimental. as well about the, ba- the barrel agent post but like with the barrel agent obviously you have to brew the original thing then you've got to go and barrel mm-hmm. agent might i think sometimes they just go we'll have some set aside and that will be like a small batch of barrel aged definitely um, stuff so i think there's obviously that as well and Plus that's that's people, a massive oh, risk i would have gone oh they just want to milk it for the best recipes possible and then it's like the more i'm drinking them and the more i'm like like no 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 that's not no what's happened in here and barrel aging is a massive risk because you don't know if that's going to come out you don't know like you think you've got this barrel that's great there could be all sorts of bacteria in there that you're not aware of that completely mess up your brew like you put aside this tiny little bit of an amazing beer to stick in there and it just all goes to pot like it's it's risky it's really i mean the payoff <laughs> the payoff is but, brilliant when it comes out right but it is risky business i think barrel aging it's really interesting you say that because i don't think as a person that doesn't brew at all mm. 
and when you look at it from a consumer standpoint, a consumer who doesn't take part in that process, I mean, this is getting a bit, I think, geeky for people that probably just <laughs> know what we think about the beers and they don't yeah. care about the technical stuff. For me, hearing that side of things, like that's that type of risk is something I never would have considered about the process. This conversation aside, when I think about a barrel age, I'm like, oh yeah, they just put it in a barrel and they age it. And, you know, I, I don't sit there and go, what's the risk that that's not actually going to turn out? How many barrels have these big breweries opened and gone, oh no, that, I mean, I'm sure with, the more you know what you're doing, the more seasoned you are with it, the less you have those risks, but it's still risks nonetheless. It's one that consumer, from a consumer's perspective, unless you brew, you don't think about. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. you've mentioned that. It's a good and you can't, it, you can't time it either whereas with some of these beers like when when a brewer is consistently making the same recipe they know we're going to do this it will ferment this long we then condition it this long we package it it goes out with barrel aging you don't know how long that's going to take for it to get yeah. to the right like people that are seasoned will be like okay yep yeah, if we start this now i reckon it will take us about this long but it could be that actually the time you think it's ready you taste it it's, it's not ready, ready yet or it needs to be blended with something else, or you need to leave it for another six months. I mean, I may, and even, you know, with these higher ABV beers or with with beers that end up with fruit or different flavors and stuff in them, I, my first ever fruit beer that I made, I made a cherry stout. <laughs> I made a mistake with the recipe because I did, I was, that it was one of the first of my own recipes that I made. And I looked through all these different recipes and I found this one. I was like, oh yeah, I like the ingredients in this one. I'm going to use that. Um, it was a barley wine recipe. <laughs> so massive amount and I was like oh this is a lot okay. of, this is a lot of malt so I've not used this amount of malt before um it came out at 15.2 percent oh, wow. massive and cherry takes a really long time as a flavor to develop as well um we are about just over 18 months since I made that beer and I'm happy for people to drink it really yeah wow <laughs> Yeah, I made it in smaller bottles so that I could taste it along the way. Um, I tried I've got it up so after six many months. Questions. <laughs> I have so many questions and I feel like this warrants a whole separate yeah. discussion. Let's just do a whole but, separate, yeah, but so, so, whole separate <laughs> podcast on barrel aging because that is yeah. literally, I've got oh, yeah. so we'll many do, additional questions out of interest because it's really I mean, quite an and, interesting thing. But. And that one's not even barrel aged. That's just being aged in the bottle. So then when you've got your barrel as well, you've got the the added issues that if it's a wine barrel you're like with a spirit barrel the taste that you're going to get from yeah that. you don't know and like the length of time you leave it in there is how the different flavors are going to develop they could you know you're always risking the chance of bacteria getting in there and spoiling it like the longer you leave it so that there are many pitfalls so Listen, i've got so <laughs> many different questions so basically <laughs> if you want i mean we're going to probably do it anyways if you want to see an episode on aging mm. aging beer not us aging no I don't pressing don't want to see that um let us know and um i mean we're probably going to do it anyways because like i said i've got so many yeah. questions off of it i feel like i can learn or just maybe just overall brewing in general um and if you are from a brewery then you happen to be listening to us i don't know why you'd want to listen to me ramble on do yes me no um and you have a specific reason why you did an MP version of yours it would be really interesting to yeah, hear let's know I know my my thought process has changed as I've become more and more involved, but it would actually be good to get feedback from breweries. So let us know. Yeah, let us know. I'm interested. (laughs) I want to know. (laughs) The smell on this, I'm getting a bit coconut on this. Just to remind you, we are drinking crunch. We are drinking crunch because we went off on a tangent again. (laughs) Crunch. Um, An interesting tangent, but still a tangent. Um, I'm getting a bit coconut-y smell to it. Yeah. Um, which is weird because I expect it to be uh, an immediate punch of just nuttiness. And there is some nuttiness. It's almost a bit wafery though. I'm yes. getting a bit wafery. Biscuit. Yes. So it says on the can, when our founder knew he was expecting his first child, he wanted to create a special beer to celebrate the birth of baby Michaela. So after 37 experiments, this stout was what we consider to be the perfect ratio of peanut butter, lactose and biscuit. So that's probably where you're getting that waferiness from. Yeah. A massive hit of roasted peanut on the nose, followed by a silky smooth mouthfeel and a sweet crunch that as it goes down. So yeah, Do that's that roasted peanut on the nose is what I'm getting. Yeah, I get a little bit of caramel. 
I get a bit of peanut, but it's very mild compared to what I expected, I think. Yeah. Car- oh, yes, I've got some caramel in it. But weirdly, like I said, I've got a bit of coconut in there. And I'm not I think quite... that's the biscuitiness. The biscuitiness is, yes, yeah, like yeah. a wafer biscuit. Yeah. I like it, but I'd like to have it yeah. on draft because I think it would be smoother. I think right. in the canning it, a crisp. it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit fizzier than I would like it to be. It's not mm. like intensely carbonated or anything, no. but there's a fizz to it, a tiz, that's a word I like to use, a tiz <laughs> to it, it is, yeah. <laughs> that I would much rather have like a silky smoothness. And I want it to be a little bit thicker. I think in based my personal on style, opinion. based on the style it is, the, the, a more of a smoothness to it i think would be beneficial but you're yeah. right it it's not bad like i like it, it. No, it's really nice i just want it to, i want some i want a bit of chewiness to it per, just yeah, personally it's <laughs> it's definitely on the thinner side yeah. um, but the flavor's there so it doesn't taste yeah at, like it's not like it's thin and flat there's definitely a lot of flavor there to make yeah. up the thinner bits to it but i can see if it was smoother a bit creamier a bit more full that might be yeah even but we might get that from the crunchier actually yeah should we do like that let's crack it let's let's see crack have you have one. you tried the crunchier yet so yeah i've had crunchier on draft so it had that lovely creaminess to it i thought oh, i thought you just had the crunch i didn't realize you had the crunch. no I, I had crunch in can and crunchier on on draft i mean the head from... on both pours are very there. they're I mean, quite they're quite similar colors they're both yeah. kind of a dark brown with a reddish highlight to them and i would both... say the head on this one's a bit more um a bit more i don't know like mocha y colored um, yeah it's a bit it's got a bit more of a yellowy brown tinge to it whereas the other one was beige yeah i'm getting lots of coconut for this one now you've said it yeah I think that's just psychological <laughs> I'm gonna. I want to put this out there, but I because I don't know how to put it into words. I just know how to put it into pleb words, and I don't really know how to do it better than that. And it almost has a bit of like a like it's not a burning smell, but it's like when you heat up a blow dryer and you get that like that's gonna um, be the roasted malts. It's like a burning blow dryer smell. I'd be really interested to know what what malts they used in this. There's wheat in it, um, but yeah, I think there's a there's some ro- there'll be some roasted malt yeah. in here, and that burnt smell is going to be coming from those. But it's um, not like I want to make it clear. It's not a burnt that I'm like no. It's, like, it's not like when you burn a baked good and you go, oh, that's burnt. Like that does not smell good. It's like that's charred. Like it's not a charred. Yeah. It's like a. I don't know. That's the only way I could describe it. And I think you've probably put it a bit more eloquently than I did. It's not as nice in can as it is on draft. It's got that tiz again. I think there's more. I'm getting a bit of a banana taste. Yeah. And that's not what it tasted like on cask when I, not on cask, on draft when I had it on draft. There was, it was like chocolatey, caramel, peanutty, and it was smooth. And I'm getting a bit like, peanut butter banana. And I don't yeah. hate it. Um, it just wasn't what I expected. But yeah, it's a more coconut smell. But then you go to taste it and you're expecting it's going to be a bit nutty and a bit coconut. And it's like peanut butter banana with the heaviness on the banana. I'm I'm upset because I really loved it on draft and I'm not such a fan See, of it. See, I think can. mine is very thick. It is quite thick and it's smooth. It's thicker. A bit of carbonation, but I'd say it is. mine is quite chewy. Yeah. It's it's definitely thicker than than the crunch, although in can I'm enjoying the crunch more. I'm not I'm not really if I'm honest, and this is not saying that I don't enjoy it. I'm not saying that it's a bad beer. I'm no, not no, not, not at all. Again, I'm not saying that you know, like you said, if it's on draft, it might be different. Um, it's not as peanut buttery as I expected it to be, and I love peanut butter, so I wanted it to be like heavily peanut butter and i think that's my thing with crunch like when it first came out everyone was like crunch is so amazing oh it's so good it's the best peanut butter beer ever um and now i and this is interesting because so we we've had a request from a listener hi layla hi sam um they emailed us and asked us if we could do a stout 
episode which we are going to do we're doing um yeah Surprise. that's that is happening <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna give you some interesting information about stouts and the range of stouts that are out there because anybody lots- that takes the time to write it yeah. to- <laughs> you, you like, will Matt. get your request oh my god you listen to it like yes <laughs> we'll get your request <laughs> But I, I went back to them and asked them what sort of questions they had about stouts. So we made sure we covered everything. Um, and Layla told me that one of her favourite stouts is um, Belching Beaver's Peanut Butter Milk Stout. Um, which is very good. Which is very good. I've had it. Um, but everyone says that that is the best peanut butter milk stout. Controversial. I don't <laughs> agree. <laughs> I really like Tailgate's Peanut Butter Milk Stout. Um, then Belching Beaver, then Crunch. That's my order of peanut butter milk stouts for you. I'd actually... For what it's I'm, worth. <laughs> I think I might agree with you on that because I've had them... Yeah. I've had, now I've had all three of them. And I would say Crunch is the least peanut buttery out of all of them. Yeah. I'm really gutted because obviously we already know the drama. I didn't get to go to the US this year. My sister had held for me a Reese's peanut butter cup stout. That would have been good to compare to these. <laughs> while I was there. And that would have been perfect to compare to these. Yeah. Um, and I love peanut butter. So for me, I want the peanut butter turned I, I want the peanut yeah. butter. Turned, I don't want the yeah. ABC turned up. I want no. the peanut butter and the yes. creaminess and the smoothness turned up a bit yeah. more. That being said, and especially based on what you what you said, I think I would try it again on tap. Um, yeah. I mean, because I also don't know, I took mine out of the fridge a bit, like a bit longer before you did. Um, and I'm not sure if maybe it's because a bit too, like some, I know, as a rule of thumb, stouts are usually need to be warmer, but I think there's sometimes it needs to be slightly colder. So I'm also wondering if maybe the temperature of it is maybe too warm and it's not the exact right temperature. When you get it on draft, it's yeah. obviously set in a way that it is the perfect temperature for pouring and, and for how you're supposed to consume it. So I'm wondering if that's maybe playing a part in it as well. Possibly, possibly. I, I just think canning it, it tends to have a little bit more carbonation to it than when it's on draft. Mm. So that kind of detracts a little bit from the body of it but they are still enjoyable beers that's that's fair enough yeah yeah that um so before we get into the final one let's sip on this for another few minutes what i guess i don't know if you've had normal and the ap version of any other beers other than the ones we're having today are there any ones that you haven't liked or you have liked in particular or um Oh, good question. I can tell you the ones that I've not liked. Yeah, sure. you t- you do do that first while I have a think. <laughs> so for me, turn it up to 11. Absolutely. I didn't buy it and I'm really glad Una- I didn't. <laughs> unabashedly going to say this. Um, you know, eleven. turn it up to 11. I thought that was awful. Um, it was just minging. I did not like it. Pumped up the, pump up the gem I've historically always liked up until recently. Yep turn it up to 11 really don't like covered it enough times don't need to harp on about it anymore but what I would say about that that I haven't said before I think what they got themselves into the situation of I would have a guess that they've picked the name of that before they completed the brewing and I would guess that they were going for that 11 percent and had they been naming it after the fact which maybe they did but it comes across like they didn't if they brewed it and it didn't hit that 11% or it hit a slightly different margin or they played around with flavors differently, I think it would have been okay. I think it sounds like, or seems like they had a name picked out and they were going for that. And that's maybe where they went a bit wrong with it. But for me, didn't, didn't work. Didn't like it. Um, Double punk already said, really not a fan of that. Um, And the one that I'm excited to try to be fair is the alcohol free version of crunch just to see how it, how it lands among these now that I've had them. Yeah, I'm interested in that. Um which she think worked, which she think not worked. Yeah. So um I so not necessarily amped up, but um left left hand brewings milk stale and then their nitro version of it. Um really enjoyed the nitro version. Like left handed brewings uh milk stout is delicious it is like chocolate ice cream in a glass um the nitro Ooh. version then just makes it really creamy so this is an american brewery so everybody might not be able to get it over here. 
<laughs> but uh, the nitro version is absolutely delicious. Like it then just makes the body of that beer just so much richer and creamier. That's a really delicious version. Um, and then oh, I'm going back to brew dog again. I can't help it. Um, I really enjoyed. Uh, so Tokyo star, which is um, one of brew dogs, famous stouts i really enjoyed um they then did a sour version of it in overwork it's called arcade city that made it almost like a flanders red ale um so think burgon de flanders and uh duchess de burgon where it's got those lovely rich balsamic flavors in there really delicious like that was an amp amped up air quotes version of tokyo star and tokyo star is pretty amped up itself <laughs> but i was that gonna was say really t- interesting the the plane tokyo i, I don't know yeah. or tokyo is quite high in mm-hmm. it, so yeah I'm tokyo sure star is pretty high tokyo star is some type of similar to just normal tokyo yeah so uh yeah so those are that those are really good and overworks has done a series of soured versions of Brewdog Classics. Um, they are all currently in my fridge. <laughs> I have not you tried them yet. Maybe that's another works, podcast but... version. Maybe yeah, I, should I don't have any of those. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll just do it on, on my own. own. <laughs> Ditch me. Ditch me. Everyone will love it because it will be it will be like describing things accurately and everything will be like it, it won't be like, oh, blow dryer burn. It will be something fancy sounding. <laughs> Black patent malt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a lot better. <laughs> just blow dry a burn. Brilliant. Right, are we cracking into this city of yeah, cake now? I really want this cake. I was going to have this, both of these, for my birthday because yeah. I was going to do all cake themed. You did all the cake beers. Yeah, I was going to do all the cake ones. Um, and then I decided to do the ice cream as well. So it's like ice cream and cake. And then it became too much. And then I was like, oh, surprise. Can- yeah i can't do that yeah, brilliant but not that i couldn't it was that i was like i don't want to feel horrible the next day so <laughs> drink responsibly listeners oh my god this smells beautiful i'm gonna Ooh. resist my okay fingers for this okay it smells great it does smell cakey yeah like a nutty cake getting hot fudge vibes in the smell there's not much of a head to it i'll say that mine doesn't oh i've got a massive head on mine look yeah i don't i've got a thick creamy beige head and it is black i'm trying to see wait i'm gonna be geeky getting my getting my my camera flashlight out to pour it better (laughs) nope it's got a bit of a red it's black with a red highlight yeah i would say that's fair under my lighting which isn't amazing but a thick creamy beigey head on mine it does smell like like a thin hot fudge cake yeah hot fudge definitely oh that is beautiful that's nuttier than the crunch that's nutty oh that's nutty that's like walnuts I absolutely love it. It's it's a like I said, it's it's nuttier than the actual crunch and, and crunchier. Like I I feel like this is like coffee walnut cake. It's, it's not beautiful. chocolate fudge. <laughs> That's not I a problem. Know, I love it. I'm I'm getting chocolate in there as well though. I'm get but I am getting a fudgier chocolate, like not cacao nib chocolate. It's yeah. definitely a fudgier chocolate, but it's like yeah. a like a chocolate nutty That's nice. cake. <laughs> Yeah, that's really lovely. Um, I'd like a slight, like, just being real picky here, I'd like just it to be a bit thicker. Picky. Just really picky. I'd like it just to be a touch thicker. But I would agree with that. That might actually. be because it's canned. I, I'd agree with that because I think I, because of how it has that, like, sort of sweetness to it like it, it, the way it tastes it's hard to put it into words but the way it tastes makes you feel like it should have a little bit more mouth feel to it i want to chew on it <laughs> and i'm not i want to be eating actual cake yes i want to eat actual cake please <laughs> oh, i bet this like i feel like this is something that you could make like cake frosting out of like this would make an amazing cake frosting i'm missing some brownies nice 
Yeah, that would be good as well. But then I feel like it gets lost in the chocolate anyways when you make brownies. Like this is like I want to savour the nutty chocolateness. Mm. That's good. Fan I of like it. that one. I'm a fan of it. I I think that's my favourite one so far today, actually. It's mine as well. So let's let's see. crack this imperial version. Oh, that's quite fizzy. This one's got a better head on it for sure. Oh no! Please don't trip. Oh yeah. I've had to do damage control. Uh, they're about the same colour for me. This one's got a much better head on it for me. But does have thicker a, head, I think. It does have the redness to it that you mentioned oh, as well. I just stuck my nose in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that on one of the other ones earlier, and I went to go. I think the crunchier, maybe. I went to go smell it, and I was like, "That's my nose." <laughs> oh. Oh, I just did it to myself again now. This one smells like praline. I can't get to the smell of it because the head is... We've got this <laughs> yeah. and the head is just absolutely blocking it out. Right, so top tip, listeners and viewers. I don't... I personally... This is nothing against anybody, but I personally don't like the Craft Master glasses because I find that when you pour in them, you get a massive head. No, and that's fine. No, I don't, so yeah, like they're, they're nice and they're nice to hold, like they're a nice shape, but they are a pain to pour into. And they're a pain to clean because this they're is a pain to clean. One. Yes. This is the small baby one. Like, yeah. do you understand cleaning this one is a pain? Yeah. They are a lovely, lovely yeah. looking glass, but they, uh, I find that they give you a massive head and then you can't get your nose into the aroma. No. <laughs> so, I put it all on my face. As a, as a geeky taster, they're not my favourite glass. Now that the heads... I get praline. Like, it smells yeah, like Ferrero Rocher. Now that it's kind of gone back a bit, yeah, I'm getting that as well. It was just... I wasn't guessing it because all I got was foam. Hazelnut in this one. I got walnut in the other one, and this one I get hazelnut. It's really sweet, but not in a bad way because there's a bitterness in there that's knocking it back a little bit. I'm definitely getting a lot of sweetness, but I'm not getting as much chocolate, like fudgy mm. chocolate in this one as I did get in the other one, if I'm honest. I agree. It's richer, I think. Yeah. It's a lot richer. Yeah. And I think right at the end, I'm getting a little bit of that alcohol warmth. Mm, I'm getting more booze in this one as well. Yeah. Uh, just to go back, City of Cake was 6.5. This one is 11%. Ooh. So we have turned it up to 11 in this one. You can... But you can taste that it's eleven percent. Like it's not dangerous. Like you wouldn't be like, I'm gonna knock that back. Whoops, that's eleven percent. Like you're like, oh yeah, well, I don't know. I'm gonna have to <laughs> Some people oh, I <laughs> like <laughs> I, I like it. I like it, but it, it does tell me that it's eleven percent, like I'd have to sip it. I, I think for me it's less the booziness, it's more the richness of why I couldn't do it. The booziness mm. for me comes second to the richness where I couldn't throw it back because I go, Oh, it's too rich, it's too sweet, I'm not sure yeah. I can I'm getting a lot of the multi sweetness to it that I didn't get with it's the other. It's very sweet. Yeah, I think I still prefer the other one. If I'm I prefer. I think I prefer City of Cakes. I think it's more balanced. I think out of all of them, City of Cake might be my favourite. It might go City of Cake, then OG. No, not OG. Yeah, OG Hazy. Then both the crunchy ones. Oh. Uh, then normal Hazy then this one and then triple hazy not that i don't like this one it's just when it comes to how we i'm judging based on how easy is it to drink you know what is yeah. the depth the flavors you're getting and to me i think and how and how well it nails what it says it's going to nail and i think that one's maybe not as yeah i'm really surprised because i've always said nope i prefer crunchy or over crunchy and having it out of the can today has really changed my mind so i and Let's bear in mind, people, I'm a stout girl. City of cake, then crunch, then crunchier, then cake metropolis. I'm having mind changes. <laughs> then Hazy Jane, OG, triple. I'm having my mind changed as well. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is really gross. I literally just did like a minor, tiny little baby burp. 
And the taste that I got from that was more about cake. And I was like, hang on a second. And I've just drank it a bit more. And the more I drink it, the more cake like less I should have less rich it becomes. And I'm like, okay, right. We're keeping it classy on a women's brew the podcast. You can cut all that out. I don't <laughs> no, I love it. That's staying in. I'd like to even <laughs> say, I, I genuinely would like to even be like, oh, it's because I've drank this many ABVs. There's no. different by ABVs. No, it's literally the amount of times that I'm like, need myself. <laughs> <laughs> the trials and tribulations of beer podcasters, listeners. Honestly, <laughs> the more, the, to be honest, I think it was the first few sips of Cake Metropolis. It was very rich. It was very boozy, tolerable levels of boozy. Um, and I wasn't getting that fudge cake. And yeah. now, the more I'm going into it, the more I think the aftertaste is quite fudge cake. So that's what I'm saying. I'm having mind changes. Hang on. I think it's a little bit too sweet for me. And I like a sweet beer. It's still so. sweet. I think it's still rich. It's still very rich um, and sweet, I think. But I would say that I think I prefer the cake, the cake ones to the peanut butter ones, which I'm surprised because I thought I was going to be like hands down. Yeah, one. I thought you were going to like the peanut butter ones better. You do because I love peanut butter. That's, that's your wheelhouse. You love a bit I of peanut I could literally butter. eat peanut butter off a spoon. I'd be so happy. <laughs> love it. She was talking to me. She was talking to me over Christmas with her peanut butter pretzels. Peanut listeners. butter pretzels. Very I rude. love my peanut butter pretzels. They're my favourite thing. I, if I could give you the next time I send you a package, I'm going to put a baggie and it's going to be peanut butter pretzels because they are. And then you're going to last laugh's going to be on you because you're going to go. Yeah. These are amazing. I need to get. And to then the I can never get them because they're too <laughs> far away. It's all right. I've got two bulk boxes of them from Tesco. <laughs> Costco, not Tesco. <laughs> uh, well, while we finish sipping on this, yes. are there any that you have lined up to try, normal and MP, or ones that you want to try out of all the ones? Um, yeah. I think I missed out on it, but um, I really enjoy Amazon's desserts in a can. Those are some some interesting beers there. Um. Yeah, I've always did. had them separate. I've never done yeah. the like I had the um the peanut butter caramel crisp jam donut. Yeah. And I'd be interested to try the barrel aged version of that because I yes, heard I would. What's that? The jam piece. Because I I think I no, I think I had the barrel aged and not the original. And I didn't get much of the jam. And mm. somebody said, well, the barrel aging process probably means the jam piece. Not the jammy off. bit off. Exactly. Yeah. I've only ever had one or the other. I've never had the same of both yeah so i've not had any of the barrel aged ones i just didn't get my hands on them um and I'm, I'm also finding at the moment that i think that amazons have gone a bit mental with their they've gone they've gone, they've the gone a bit yeah <laughs> they've gone a bit let's see how many different flavors we can stick in a can and that doesn't always work i mean their beers are amazing um but yeah I've sh- some of the flavor combinations i've been like oh i don't think i, I personally will like that so i've st- stayed away from them but the i've i've had a couple i've had a few of the dessert in dessert in a can ones and they are delicious but i would like to try a barrel aged one see how that differs um millionaire from wild beer co is probably one of my favorite stouts ever um that's a millionaire shortcake stout um I had Trillionaire over Christmas, which was their um, Imperial Stout version. It was very different. Um, it was okay. <laughs> but I think it was, but again, that's because you could really get like, it was very, very rich. There was a lot of alcohol in there. And I personally just didn't enjoy that. Um well, whereas as well there was there was apricot in that so i think it yeah. was like it's an impy version but it's a bit different yeah they put apricot in the trillionaire yeah. which i think and i don't like apricot or raisins or anything like that that's gonna yeah add more sweetness and it was to it so i wouldn't say from from my tasting of it i didn't find it sweeter i found it it was a lot of rich chocolate and like dark mm-hmm. chocolate and i i just I wasn't a fan of that compared to when I'm comparing it to millionaire, which is just silky, delicious chocolate, caramel, biscuitiness. Um, 
I just didn't think it was as good as Millionaire. But that's my personal preference. No. Because I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Wild Beer Co. So. <laughs> I'm not sure. I feel like I've tried Millionaire, but I can't. If you I, haven't, you should. That's what I'm saying. I feel like I have, but I can't remember doing it. Yeah. And I'm like, I really want to. And I really wanted to try True, you know, as well. So that was one of the ones that I had on my list of wanting to try because I'm not confident I've actually had Millionaire, but I hear it's amazing. It's delicious. Um, I might have had it and just forgot, but I, don't, and I might have forgot to put it on on the hat. <laughs> so, because I do that quite frequently. But yeah, there's well, like on the similar vein, I've had the maple pancake from Fierce. So Fierce do quite a few of them, actually. They've done um, the oh. maple pancake and they've done bourbon maple pancake. They've done uh, VBM, which is very big moose. And then they've done the bourbon BA. A moose moose. Oh, yes, moose moose. Um, they've done Cafe Racer and then the Barrel Age Imperial Cafe Racer. Um, they, like I said, they've done quite a few of them uh and i've only had the maple pancake i've never had the bourbon one so i'm quite interested to see does that make it sort of too boozy to enjoy because it was spot on it was maple pancake like 100 percent. so i don't know if the bourbon's going to make it a bit too boozy if you know what i mean yeah i do know what you mean unenjoyable in that um i've also got so i put it behind me I've put the fallen acorn, which I'm sending you one of the pie hard. Spoiler alert, because there's going to be a separate <laughs> for that. But the pie hard, and I've got the MP pie hard. So I'm quite excited to try the differences between those two. Um, I've got top ropes, Canadian destroyer, and Imperial Canadian destroyer. Canadian destroyer. Um, that was the maple peak and Imperial stout. Um, that one's the one that you almost bought and you didn't. Yeah. You should have, because it sounds really, really nice. And then I've got extra brownie pints, but I don't actually, I've never actually tried the normal brownie pints. <laughs> so, I've only had extra brownie pints. I've not had brownie yeah, pints. I think, I think normal brownie pints came out quite a while mm. ago, um, and I never got my hands on that one. But when I saw the extra, I was like, I am getting that, and it's happening. I've also had much, you know, such intense, such intense dance vibes from Pomona Island. Um, but I never bought the <laughs> much intenser dance vibes. <laughs> it's a brilliant name. I, so I bought such intense dance vibes because I love the name of it. And I was like, yeah. this like this is very me. I'm buying it. It's a sour. It's like the, I didn't really like the guava element to it. You don't like guava, do you? I just, I just don't. But everyone's going on about how amazing it was. And it was tropical fruits and everything. Yeah. It was the guava. I was like, yeah, you don't like guava. I can't. Um, so I never got the much intenser, but I really wanted yeah. the label. But I didn't want to ask anyone for the label because I felt like that was cheating. Because I was like, I yeah, because if you haven't drunk it, you can't have the label. That's not allowed. Exactly. I was like, I didn't earn that label, but I really don't think I will like the amplified version mm. of it. Um, because yeah, it just went up to quite a high ABV. <laughs> no. You'll be really proud of me because um, I've bought some Pomona Island because um, yes. I've only had one of theirs. I've I've bought bought a stout and a and a dipper sour. I think I'm I bought. Ex- I'm s- you got a dipper sour. I got the is it the black dipper sour? Chivavu. It's got a star oh, on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's the two that came out, and I think was one a stout and one was a sour. No, no. I think one was a one was a hoppy one because I'm doing this all off the top of our heads. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah, but... no, like... I think one was a was a hoppy beer, so I didn't get that one, and the other one was a sour, so I've got the sour one. Yeah, there was two that they, yeah. they came sort of like in a set. So. Yes, because they're named after Shooting Stars references. You don't? Do you know what Shooting Stars is? You won't know, will no. you? No. No. You need to look up Shooting Stars. It's an English if comedy I... program. Do you actually understand that if I put into Google shooting, <laughs> shooting stars? No, shooting stars. It's be like, um, put in the sky. It's gonna be like here's a link to NASA. Like... No, put in um, Reeves and Mortimer shooting stars, then it will come up. Okay, that will that's that narrows it down a bit. If I just put in shooting stars, it will be like when can you see the next shooting star <laughs> website? Which um, I love a bit of starage, but it's not going to help me understand anything. No. 
that. But for what I was talking about, yeah. I love their names. Their names are like just amazing. I wanted Kenley. Kenley. When I looked up what Kenley was, it was really great. I'm not going to give away what it is, but <laughs> Google Kenley promote. Just Google Kenley, and <laughs> you'll know exactly what it is. I'm really sad because they did a labyrinth named beer, and I didn't get it. Um, was it was a it was a peach beer and it was called You Have No Power Over Me. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> and I didn't get it. I love peach. I think that's why I think that's why I what well, see I'm not a massive fan of peach, which is what I was like. White grape, mm. peach. Anything white grape and peach, and I'm in. No, so peach. No. Pe- I'm getting old and peach gives me indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to be really careful when I have peach. <laughs> Otherwise it's just like not fun. <laughs> Can't, apricot, no, I'm allergic to apricot. No, no apricot. You I used to really peach. love peach. Can't have peach anymore because I'm old. And you can't have peach. <laughs> sad. Yeah, sad times. Oh. Uh, Anyways, I think I think we're kind of about done. I think Take, so. <laughs> I think we've kind of sort of raked, ranked them all before I got to the point that I changed my mind on my ranking. Yeah. And now I don't know what my ranking is. No. <laughs> Um, so yeah I guess that is it for now if you have your favorite impy version of any normal brew um, or there's one that you massively hated let us know about it joe where can they reach you um if you want to talk to me you can find me at a woman's brew on instagram and facebook and twitter actually i don't post on there but you can go on there and i might i'll probably see it I get notifications. Um, or if you want to come and find my beer school, Love Beer Learning, we are at Love Beer Learning on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we also are at the website, lovebeerlearning.co.uk. And you can email us and also email us at the podcast at lovebeerlearning at gmail.com. Where can they find you? Yeah, they can find me on Instagram at adventures underscore in underscore optimism. Uh, yeah, I've, I think I said it before, I'll say it again. I've joined the beer tent. I'm quite excited to learn yeah. about things. Um, and if you've got episode requests, if you're, at, if you're listening to this and you've made it this far and you've not just gone burning hair, like burning hair, <laughs> prior, like ridiculous, I'm, you've made it this far and there's something you want to see us cover that we've not already covered or we've covered and you want more of it, let us know. Reach out to me, reach out to Joe. And um, until next time. Cheers. Cheers.